Hey guys, Yulia here. So today's video is a Q&A video. I haven't done one of those in a while and the questions kind of piled up. So I'm going to jump right into the questions. Um, the first one is from Rachel Stallings and she asks, um, Yulia, all of my bulbs are coming up because we have such mild winter, zone 7B. Any suggestions other than mulch and will they still bloom? Um, so Rachel, I have exactly the same thing going on in my garden right now. I have snowdrops and tulips and daffodils and hyacinths kind of starting to peak um, from the, the ground. Um, I would not worry about anything right now. And if you are a little bit nervous, uh, you can add uh, one to two inches of mulch or maybe if you ha still have some Christmas trees laying out on the curb somewhere, you can take some of those branches and give um, the plant a little bit extra protection but the reason I wouldn't worry is because those little shoots are just leaves and leaves have a pretty good protection from frost now um, what happens sometimes is we have very mild winter we have very mild spring and then out of a sudden sometime in April when the bulb uh, the bulbs are starting to bloom already and you see those buds there is hard frost that what usually kills the blooms and um, at that point there's actually nothing we can do and it is kind of an outlier event it does not happen that often it was only once um, that uh, since we've lived in this house that happened in my garden and you know you could probably do maybe put a cloche over your bulbs but you know i wouldn't worry about it that much it's um, going to be okay and I'm really hoping that we're not going to have some weird frost event right in the middle of the spring when the blooms are um, when the bulbs are blooming um, so let's cross our fingers and that everything's gonna be okay so the next question is from IP and this question is about the hyacinth forcing uh, video that I posted earlier this week and they ask do you keep the bulbs in the original bag in the fridge before planting it could be problematic to place several pots this size with soil into the fridge what are other options do you place the planted pots in a plastic bag or cover them somehow can you can they be stored in the garage um, so I completely understand that not all of our family members share our passion for plants and forcing bulbs so they are not that happy to see um, pots with soil in the refrigerator where the food is stored but there are a couple of options um, one if you are really into forcing bulbs you can buy um, extra refrigerator a tiny one like a wine fridge and you could put it in the basement and go all crazy with forcing bulbs um, and force as many bulbs as, as the fridge can fit another option that is a little bit more viable is um, dig holes outside in your garden and put pots with your forcing bulbs in those holes and cover them with some sort of protection like Christmas tree branches or maybe um, ornamental grasses that you cut in the fall and then whenever you want them to bloom you lift those pots months prior and you place them inside your house so you can um, kind of use your outdoor space as a spare refrigerator and uh, definitely use them for forcing um, garage also works um, if it is not heated heated and it is not um, freezing so the temperature has to be around 34 degrees or so next question is from lova lova and uh, this question is on paper whites forcing um, beautiful i forced paper whites recently but the blooms smell very bad like a chemical product is this normal okay this question fascinates me and i did not realize until this year just how many people dislike the scent of paper whites so i actually get, did this like unofficial unscientific poll on instagram and 50 percent of people absolutely despise the smell and 50% of people love it so we're kind of split in the middle right there with the paper white scent um, I think it's um, not even like the scent of paper whites themselves it's your own chemistry it's almost like some people um, do not like cilantro because it tastes like soap to them and other people are just fine with cilantro so I think it's very personal but I would definitely check before you force paper whites next time if you really like the scent
So the next question is from Betsy B and she asks, this is a little off topic, but can you recommend what brand of hoe do you use for weeding in your no dig beds? So I use a Dutch hoe for weeding in my garden and Dutch hoe is almost like this razor sharp um, blade hoe that is parallel to the ground. So when you use it, um, it cuts the roots of your weeds and then you, they could just biodegrade. grade um, It works excellent for annual weeds and um, the perennial weeds you can keep cutting the same way but they will keep popping up because for perennial weeds you have to actually go after the root. So for perennial weeds I use Fisker's Weeder and I will post a um, link in the description down below. It is my absolutely favorite tool for weeding. Um, so another hole that I heard that is great in the garden is a stirrup hoe. I've never used one myself, but I've heard other gardeners sing it praises. I think it works almost the same as, as a Dutch hoe, uh, but maybe a little bit duller. So the next question is from IG Muse, and this question is on the houseplant tour that I did last week. Um, do you spray your plants in that room or do you take them outside? My indoor plants are super infested this year and I'm afraid to take them outside to spray because it's cold. I'm in zone six as well. Um, so do not take your tropical plants outside at this time of the year. Obviously they will freeze. Um, and I do spray my plants in this room with a, a Spoma insecticidal soap or neem oil. But before I do that, my first line of defense is all always wash my plants first. So I just take them to the sink and I kind of uh, look around all of the leaves and stems and I wash off either mealybugs or scale or whatever the infestation that I have at the moment. It usually deals with the problem really well. If I still have bugs after a couple of weeks of observing the plant, then I will spray with neem oil or any, there's tons of organic methods that you can use inside your house. I used to spray my plants with organicide inside the house and it just smelled terrible. <laughs> organicide works really well outdoors and I use it to this very day, but it does have fish oil, so it does not smell that great. But the other products um, smell just perfectly fine. Here's a non-gardening question for me. Um, Don Mileski asks, um, Yulia, are you an introvert? I find this topic so intriguing. Laura from Garden Answer says she's an introvert. Many of my favorite YouTubers, female ones, say they're introverts. Um, so this is so interesting. Um, by the way, I love Laura. I love Garden Answer. I watch her all the time. Um, but I think I'm an ambivert. Um, I love people. I love hanging out with people, meeting new people. I love going to parties and kind of exchanging ideas, but I also love my personal space and I kind of ha will have that feeling when I need to retreat and kind of relax in my cave or my plant room. And then I will have uh, times when I really need to go out and interact with people and um, it brings me so much joy. So I think in life it's just important to find that balance in um, between your personal space and being outside and um, interacting with people. And, but I do believe that some people are just naturally introverts and some people are more outgoing. The next question is from Arthur M. And he asks, uh, why can't I find Helleborus in South Texas, San Antonio to be more specific? Do you know where I may order some? Um, so Arthur, um, I first of all, I love Helleborus. They're one of my most favorite perennials. They are deer resistant, they're drought resistant, they're shade tolerant, they're beautiful, they bloom very early in the spring. So there is absolutely every reason to buy Helleborus. Um, so they are hardy from zone four to nine and I looked up San Antonio, Texas. So you are in zone nine, so you should be able to grow Helleborus. Um, if you can't find them in your local nurseries, I will definitely check online. My favorite online places to shop is Wayside Gardens and Bluestone Perennials. Um, there's another one, American Meadows, that I tried last year. They are mostly uh, geared toward native plantings, but they may have some Helleborus as well. But definitely check those two places and um, good luck. 
Next question is from Snow and Summer. That's a great name. Um, how do you get rid of weeds before you plant? So if I'm starting a new plant bed, I use a no dig method now and I will post a link to the video on how to make a no dig bed in the description down below. Um, the no dig method will get rid of lawn, annual weeds, perennial weeds, you probably going to have to wait until they pop up again from under the newspaper and mulch and then you have to either hand pull them or again use that fiscus weeder that I mentioned earlier in the video um, so but all the perennial weeds absolutely have to be gone before you start an herbaceous border shrub border you know it's not as important if you start in a herbaceous border there is absolutely no place for <laughs> perennial weeds in there but um, Again, the no dig method works really well and it just takes time to get rid of perennial weeds, but you can do it. Next question is from Jill Berenger, and this question is on one of my most watched videos on this channel and it is a video on a garden tour that I did on the garden with a fountain and the four arborvitaes and lots and lots of plants. Uh, so she asks, can you tell us about the fountain and the degroot spire needs trimming ever and how to do it? Thank you, gorgeous. Um, so the manufacturer of the fountain is Mazzarelli, and I will post their website in the description down below. They are located in New Jersey. They do not sell their products directly from their website, but they have tons of dealership in New dealerships in New Jersey. I am not sure um, about the rest of the country, but you can just plug in your zip code in their website and see if they have dealership in your neighborhood. Uh, they sell fountains and statuary and a lot of lot of different fun stuff um, as for the degrude spire arborvitae they rarely need any trimming or pruning and that was actually the reason I selected that plant because I did not want the homeowners to do more work than they need um, it probably will be eight to ten years before they need to shear those plants at all they have very tight habit um, they're kind of almost like frilly curly looking um, love those plants and the last question is from Venus Thompson um, are you winter jug sewing this year how did it turn out last time I can't seem to find a video uh, about the results so Venus I was so happy with winter sewing last year and I did it kind of an experiment so I said maybe I will have 50% success rate I had 99% success rate as for the germination growth and bloom I was overwhelmed with plants there were jugs with plants uh, both annuals and perennials all over my garden I did not know what to do with them but I highly recommend that method it freed up a lot of space in my house so I could start other plants uh, like dahlias and caladiums and elephant ears the ones that are not as tolerant of cold in early spring um, I'm definitely doing it this year so last year I started it around January 15th and I don't think it's necessary to start it that early you can start it right now beginning of February or maybe even a couple of weeks will be fine um, so I have my little list of my annuals and perennials that I will be winter sowing this year I'm not sure if I'll do a video about it um, if you guys are interested I'm not sure about that but um, it's definitely worth it um, and you will have so many plants you wouldn't know what to do with them so this is it for today guys um, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm working on the landscape design series for you guys and it has been taking a while because I had no idea how difficult it was to translate my professional knowledge in a language that uh, a homeowner or a gardener can understand on how to build a garden um, and how design works so I'm trying really hard to make this information digestible for you guys so look out for those videos if you are new here consider subscribing I would love to stay in touch with you um, and if you have any other questions let me know and I'll see you next time